Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the third generation Q900, an all-mode, all-band transceiver. The Q900 has a built-in 4900 mAh rechargeable battery with 20 watts on HF and VHF and 10 watts on UHF. This radio is a smidge above a standard QRP radio. Now, being able to transmit between 160 meters right up to 70 centimeters in the handbands, the receive on the Q900 covers from 100 kilohertz all the way up to 2 gigahertz. And for those that are interested, yes, you can transmit and receive on the 11 meter 27 megahertz band on all modes. The Q900 will arrive in a nice little protective carry case, along with everything you need to get on the bands bar your antenna. The microphone is a speaker mic with a 4 connection 3.5mm plug and a headphone socket at the bottom. A USB-C cable is also included which can be used for connecting to your computer. Now we'll talk about compatible software later in the video, but this cable will also charge the internal battery. A short DC cable is provided and if running at home you can use this on your shack power supply. The Q900 that I received has the GPS module installed but please note that the GPS antenna is not included in the kit. You will need to purchase this separately. Luckily they're relatively cheap if you don't already own one and can be sourced locally from Amazon or eBay. Now the Q900 itself is solidly built with its full metal casing and brushed aluminium effect front panel. The Q900 can be controlled via the front facing push buttons or via Bluetooth with a control app. The color screen shows a live waterfall and scope. So if you're using the front buttons for tuning, it's easy to move to an active frequency. This alleviates the common concern of not having an inbuilt rotatable VFO. In practice, it's extremely easy to use the buttons to change frequency, especially as the waterfall's 48 kilohertz bandwidth will provide the user information on local activity. On either side of the Q900, you'll also notice cooling fans. Now these automatically turn on and off when a set temperature has been reached, helping to keep cool the internals of the radio. The rear panels host the main antenna connection, which is an SO239, along with a DC input, two USB sockets, audio out, an accessory port with a Morse key connection by its side. The LAN connection at this point in time is not currently used, but the two SMA connections are Antenna 2 and GPS. These SMA connections will only be available if you have the corresponding modules installed. The standard USB connection can be used for connecting items such as keyboards or inserting a memory stick for updating firmware. The USB-C connection is used to connect to your computer for CAT control and audio. Once plugged into your computer, a virtual serial port will appear alongside a sound card input and output for the Q900. This makes using digital modes extremely easy and with just one cable. The audio out from the USB sound card can be configured to either demodulated audio output or IQ. When using the IQ output, an SDR application can be used to show the waterfall on a computer running the supplied software. I'll also show you that later. Antenna 2 is used for when you have the optional DMR module installed. In this configuration, VHF and UHF comms share the main antenna connection for receive and antenna 2 for transmit. Now this is extremely useful for when working in split mode as you'll be able to work multiple band satellites with just one radio operating on two different bands. Now the GPS SMA connection is where the GPS antenna is connected. Remember, this is only provided if you have the GPS option installed. Mexico Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Again, again, your call? Yeah, Mexico Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Mexico Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Good afternoon, 57, over. Yeah, you're five seven also, five seven, five and eight. Uh very good afternoon. The name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. Thank you very much for the nice contact. Seventy three have a nice afternoon, bye. Thank you, bye bye. 
The audio output from the Q900 is nice and clear with options to use external speakers either from the rear AFO socket, the headphone socket on the front panel or via the speaker mic connection. Now, as mentioned earlier, the Q900 supports Bluetooth, not only for cat control, but also two-way audio. The Q Radio BLE application for Android is a free download and can be used to control the Q900 fully from the application. The app uses BLE, so no messing around how to pair each device, but you still have to select it within the software by holding down the BLE button and then releasing. Now this app features a VFO control or at least an image of a VFO that when turned either way it will act like a VFO and change the radio's frequency. Other radio settings such as modulation type, audio output, RFRX and TX settings along with noise reduction controls are easily accessible from the main page of the app. Well, some of the functions require just a simple tap while others just require a long press to activate just like on the radio. The Android screen shown here on the right is just a screen recording made on my 7-inch Lenovo tablet, which runs Android version 9. Now this tablet is a couple of years old and it was able to run the software with no issues. Just to point out, there are no Bluetooth settings needed on the radio itself. Bluetooth is always enabled, allowing you to connect freely to the radio when needed. Okay, yeah, well, uh, you're coming through, um, yeah, it's a bit of a noisy band at the moment, uh, I think. Um, so, yeah, we are struggling a little bit here, but I thought I'd just come on the, uh, the band and just see if I can pick a few people up there and uh, just make sure that all the uh, all the systems are working as they should. So, um, I'm not quite sure they are yet, but obviously I'm getting out anyway, which is always a good sign. So, uh, But thanks for calling back. Really appreciate it, Brian. And uh, you have a good day over there. And uh, we'll just work a couple more and, and then we'll perhaps... Um, Close the radio down and uh, go and read the manual again. Uh, hi, hi. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Standing Whiskey. Yeah, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Please, the politics again. Yes, it's Mike Zero. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. QSL. QSL, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Five and eight. Yes, you're five and eight, five and eight, 73. 73, Oscar, Quebec, one, zero, zero. Mike, bravo, Sierra, QLZ. As the Q900 also supports all mode on two meters, I decided to take a listen for some activity. Now, luck would be on my side as there was a two meter SSB contest on. So let's take a listen to a couple of QSOs. Well, mate, no problem. Thanks very much for the call. Wish you all the best. Uh, Seeking contest, Mike Zero, November. Charlie, November, Oscar, thanks for the call. Uh, five and eight with me at the moment, zero, four, five. Five and eight, 45, Italy, Oscar, nine, one, Lima, Tango. CQ, 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 CQ contest, CQ contest. T3, Mexico, England, Holland. Golf at three, Mike, Echo, Hotel. T3, M-E-H, CQ contest, over. Yeah, Golf 4, Delta, Bravo, Lima, Portable. Uh, negative, Delta, Bravo, Lima, Portable. Uh, Delta, Bordeaux, Lima, Portable. Hi QSL, thank you. You are five nine zero zero four number four in Italy. Oscar nine one November Papa nine one November Papa over. As mentioned earlier, the model of Q nine hundred that I receive contains the optional DMR module. This allows the user to receive and transmit using DMR. It is Moto Turbo compatible and can be used with hotspots or DMR repeaters. So here's what DMR sounds like when it's configured. Kelnet, this is KR0 LEX in Wichita, Kansas. Good morning, Wichita, Kansas. KD0 USA, Palm Beach County, Florida. Actually, I was looking for Kelnet in Trinidad and Tobago. 
just for a quick uh, QSO, and then I'll get back to you. Enjoy. All right, today we have KB0 USA. Nine young people for Charlie Alpha Juliet. Go ahead. I believe Kansas is trying to get over you. I'll stand by. Using DMR is just as simple as selecting DMR from the mode selection and then heading into the menu and selecting DMR. Now within the DMR configuration page, you can change the call type between private or group, the slot number, the TX and RX color code, the call ID, which is the talk group in which you want to talk through, and then your own ID, which is your personal DMR ID that you normally use on your DMR radios to identify yourself. Other options in the menu are a call, which allows the user to set up four auto calls. Now this would be in CW. To enter text into the text box, you can either use a numeric keypad to the left or plug in a USB keyboard into the rear of the radio. Another option is DIR, which is used to show the information from the GPS and compass module. Now this information would only be available if you have the GPS and compass modules installed. You will also notice a heading dial, which changes as you're moving. Another menu option is called QChat, which allows the user to type text messages and send them to other Q900 users. However, this requires the LoRa board to be fitted and that's something that I did not have in this particular model. The music option lets you connect your mobile phone to the Q900 via Bluetooth, allowing your music library to be played through the Q900. Next is the VSWR menu item, and this is really useful. At a click of a button, you can scan the band and it will show you an accurate SWR plot. The Q900 does have an inbuilt tuner, so if the SWR is not as low as you would like, you can activate the internal ATU. Moving the marker across the band allows the user to find the lowest SWR on the current scan. The APRS option looks interesting, but I've been told by the supplier that this feature is only supported in China. Hopefully this will be opened up for use in other parts of the world soon via a firmware update. The Q900 also features a fully working FM broadcast receiver and is accessible via the radio button within the menu. The set option allows the user to tailor the Q900 how they want it to work. Adjusting screen backlights and key volumes is extremely easy, along with setting a maximum VSWR setting before the warning is issued. Configuring the Q900 to work through an FM repeater is quite easy, even through the front panel. Now this feature would use the split function to display the received and transmitted frequency using the VFO AB button to switch between the two for initial settings. Now if you hold down the split button, you're presented with a small overlay, which you can then set the CTCSS tone for RX and TX if the repeater requires it. is not correct is uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for possible uh, spotting uh, me in this frequency IW0HOQ is uh, in uh, this frequency the Q900 has a NB and NR feature the clip played there was with the noise reduction turned on now this is fully configurable through the menu, which allows the user to adjust the amount of noise reduction which is applied. In my opinion, it works quite well. One of the last things I'd like to show you is a free Android app called FT8CN. Now this app uses Bluetooth BLE between the radio and an Android device, supporting two-way audio and cat control. FT8CN is an FT8 application that lets you use the FT8 protocol from literally anywhere as long as obviously you're in range of the radio. Perfect for use at home or if you're out portable, so no need to carry large laptops around. And one of the things I like about the software is that the waterfall also shows the decoded message, so at a glance you can read all of the FTA activity on that band. With the Q900 hooked up to your computer via the USB cable, you can use digital applications like WSJTX. Such applications are fully supported with the inbuilt audio sound card and cat control. When it comes to configuring WSJTX for the Q900, you simply need to know the COM port. With the Q900 turned on and plugged into the computer, you can find the Q900 virtual COM port by checking device configuration. Within WSJTX settings, set the radio type to the Yaesu FT817. 
then set the COM port, and then change the PTT to CAT. On the audio tab, select the Q900 for input and output audio source. You should now be able to use all of your favorite digital modes using WSJTX and the Q900. Another free application specifically designed for the Q900 is CNSDR. This application runs on Windows and allows you to fully control the radio. What is also nice is a large spectrum scope with waterfall. You can completely control the radio from this application and listen via your computer speakers. Yeah, you've just gone into the new square. That's fine. November Yankee 9 7. November Yankee 9 7. You're 5 and 9 59, okay? Um, and they were all fighting one another, like gang fights. Um, and it happened in two places, apparently. One was up in uh, in Islington, and the other one was somewhere in East London. In 2016, was uh, a farm area. So I had uh, a lot, a lot of uh, agricultural ground around my house and no problem to install any kind of antenna I would have liked to uh, place and install Chris uh, back to you, my zero kilo India Bravo, India Kilo 4, uh, Bravo Papa Victor. Another Android application called Star Tracker is also freely available. This application will automatically adjust radio frequency for Doppler effect when using satellites. Now I'll make another video specifically for all the software packages at a later time as this is quite in depth. Well there we go guys, that's an overview of the Q900 all mode all band radio. I must say that I've been working closely with the supplier and the manufacturer of the Q900 and their support has been second to none. Any questions I've had while learning how to use this radio have been answered very quickly and very professionally. If you're interested in this particular radio, then I'll leave a link to it in the description below. As I said, their support has been second to none, so if you do want one of these radios, I'll recommend purchasing it from the link below. I'll also leave a link to the manufacturer's website so you can go and take a look at the well-written manual and watch out for further firmware updates. The project is very active and they're open to suggestions and feedback, so don't feel afraid to drop them a message with any questions or feature ideas. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.